Scorpio, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In these weekly videos, I review the major planetary aspects and transits and how they're impacting your natal sun. This reading is for July 25th through the 31st of 2023. Got it all written down for you. Let's get into it. We're going to start really, really broad with the big stuff. So listen, if you don't know exactly where your natal sun is placed like what degree it's on in scorpio that's okay all you need to know to enjoy this video is your birth date that's it i'm going to translate everything else for you we're going to start out with the big stuff the stuff that's impacting everybody and then i'm going to focus down into scorpio specific information and then i will break things down into the decans so that you will know exactly how your natal sun is being impacted by all the other things going on around it and what that means for your bottom line. Um, I have to say, compared to the last two weeks, this week is moving more toward the peaceful. This week, the sun is coming. Two things happen that are, that are actually very big in that the sun is coming out of its opposition to Pluto and that will relieve a lot of us. Like I got so many personal readings over the past week and a half and I think it was because you could feel the huge changes and shifts and it's like, yeah, it shifts in, in, in will I be okay or is everything gonna be okay? Like what's happening? People can feel that, that those things. So the sun is moving actually away from um, <clears throat> its opposition to Pluto. Happy Leo season, by the way, if anybody is watching that knows Leo, so that is a Leo. Um, we are in full swing, Leo season. Um, but the sun is moving out of its opposition to Pluto, and which means it's also moving out of its square to the nodes. So this energy of really the pressure and the heat is on is starting to dissipate. And then we also have the Mars opposition to Saturn that's going to be breaking up by the end of this week. I think it's like the 29th or 30th that both of these things happen. I'll read the exact dates. Mars opposite Saturn ends around the 30th. Um, and then, uh, no, Mars opposite Saturn ends around around the 29th, 30th. And then the Mer Mercury opposition to Saturn begins on the 29th. And we'll talk about what that means, but I think the reason why people like this week feels like it's it's loosening up is because those those two big oppositions that, that you feel a lot, especially with you guys with Mars, that opposition to Saturn would be intense. Um, but ultimately it's starting it's starting to dissipate. Saturn is retrograding back to five degrees of um, five degrees of Pisces and by the end of this week Mars is going to be at 12 degrees uh, Virgo so there's not really a strong a strong opposition between them anymore um, like I said however um, Mercury is going to be in opposition to Saturn by the 29th now a big transit that we have this week is Mercury Mercury is moving fast and it's mo moving out of um, Leo and into Virgo by the 29th so right now especially in the beginning of the week we have Mercury conjuncting Venus like really tight and Venus is in retrograde and they're both square to Uranus so there is this sense of unrest and wanting things to change or needing information to change and these dynamics kind of like revving up especially with Venus in retrograde sort of doing that retrospective of what needs to change what do I have to do differently I don't I want to claim more of my independence and so there is this energy right now of of speaking out of turn and saying things or at least or hearing things or learning things that really surprise you especially with regards to your finances or to whatever you desire because Venus rules desire and Mercury rules communication so this is a sense of learning things that shock you saying things that shock you hearing things that kind of either throw wrenches in the cogs or uh, break it down completely 
it's not a bad energy. I think it's an energy that we need right now, but it can be quite mischievous and disruptive, um, is what I'm saying. We also have Mars it try, um, trying to Jupiter, which is a wonderful energy, which means that whatever we put forth this week, we can really start to move things along and get things done. Um, and that will get actually, that, that trine will get tighter as the week goes on. Um, Mercury heads into Virgo on the 29th. This is really wonderful energy for Virgo. Virgo rules Mercury. In, in Virgo, Mercury becomes very studious, very pragmatic, you know, very capable of focusing on the details to make sure that everything is in the right compartment. That is going to put major strain on Mercury opposite Saturn because there's a sense of, why are you restricting me? from doing what I have to do and learning what I have to learn or, or um, disseminating information that I need to disseminate, why are there restrictions? Restrictions and frustrations on what you can say. But as, aside from Mar, like it, how it's different than the Mars opposition to Saturn is Mars opposition, Mars just acts out in anger, where Mercury will act out in logic and be able to say, hey, this stuff is stupid. Like all these restrictions or the fact that these systems don't even exist, this is stupid. And where Mars will just get frustrated and angry and pissed, Mercury will be like, well, let's get to work. Let's figure this out. And this is why this is done. And these things need to change. So I think that that could actually be, even though it's very frustrating energy, it can be overall very productive energy to point out what's not working. Um, anyway. Um, let's move on. Let's go into, there's really not much other stuff. Well, the sun opposite Pluto ends this week, and so does Mars opposite um, Saturn. I went over that. That's around the 28th, 29th for the both of them. Let's go into uh, Scorpio-specific energy. So if you guys feel that things are getting lighter, or at least loosening up, or starting to somehow not feel so stuck, that's because even though Pluto is still square the nodes, that's because there's nothing in opposition there to form that grand uh, square anymore to make us feel almost constipated and really frustrated. Um, let's go into what Pluto's doing. So Pluto is your modern ruler, Scorpio. Um, and Pluto is shifting from 29 degrees of retrograde in Capricorn to 28 degrees retrograde in Capricorn. It's going even f deeper back into Capricorn. It will be back in Aquarius um, by the end of this year. Don't worry about that. Um, but we have it going even further back into Capricorn, which is bringing it even further away from the sun or, and further away from being in opposition to anything at, at this point. Um, I think the next planet it will be in opposition to, if I'm not <laughs> mistaken, is Jupiter toward the end of the year. That'll be real freaking interesting. But... Um, no, no, no. Yeah, it's a little while now because Jupiter's only halfway through Taurus. Then it still has to go through Gemini and Cancer. I'm not even sure if it's going to happen this year. No, it's not. I'm, I'm wrong because Jupiter spends about a year in each sign. So, no, it's not going to happen for a while and until all the other ones start coming around again. And then you'll have all the other planets starting to conjunct Pluto, which is a different effect entirely. So we'll get into that when it happens. Um, but right now, we, we don't have any opposition to Pluto. However, there is a moon conjunction with Pluto on the 31st. And that can be, be just a very emotional day emotionally volatile and not easy to control very primal emotions popping out of you that's around the 31st nothing you can really do about it but take some extra care with yourself so that you don't overreact to things now mars is your traditional ruler and we still got to discuss that because you guys are still very driven by mars mars is moving between 9 and 12 degrees virgo it's still moving direct um, so it's sort of mid Virgo right now. It is trying it to Jupiter all week long, but by the eight, by the first, by August first, please don't forget to say rabbit rabbit on August first. That's actually next Tuesday in this video. This video covers the time up through next Monday. So 
ultimately I just want you guys to be aware on that Tuesday please say rabbit rabbit because that is a very fortunate day this is when Jupiter and Mars will be in perfect conjunction with each other we could really 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 get things done at that point and then um, through the 30th Mars is in opposition to Saturn but by the 28th it's even like within a six to, it's 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 loosened to a six degree orb of Saturn. So even though that's technically still an opposition, it's not a powerful opposition and it's dissipating. So ultimately there's a sense of by the 30th, the opposition to the Saturn opposition to Mars won't be really act you like won't be really frustrating you that much um let's go into the decans so if you know that your birth oh i'm sorry what's happening in scorpio nothing nothing really really big is happening in the zodiac sign of scorpio at all um the south node is out of scorpio for those of you that are scorpio ones cusps so the cusp between scorpio and um libra you are still conjunct to the south node but nobody else really has to worry about it um not that it's a worry but you guys will still feel sort of the comfort and the relaxation as everything sort of amps up or at least normalizes for everybody else um so scorpio ones if you know that your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees scorpio you are scorpio ones that correlates to Scorpio birthdays in October, pretty much. So anywhere between October 22nd and October 31st, you guys would be Scorpio ones. Your natal suns are conjunct the south node, so a sense of comfort and ease when it comes to who you are and where you've come from. <clears throat> and that'll stay with you for another month or so. Um, yeah, pretty much around there. And then you have... I'm sorry. Um by the 29th so when mercury moves into or when mercury transits into virgo all of you will be sextile to mercury now natal sun so basically it'll affect you toward the end of this week and and throughout next week mostly that you're going to have a sextile to mercury and that's really really clever energy that'll help you get anything done so if you need to present a project or audition for something if that's your life or um, write something, write a letter, write a note, uh, make, a, make a proposal, present a proposal, any kind of communication or test that you have to take, this is the time to do it. This is a great time to do it between the end of this week and next week. Um, you're going to be, your natal sun is going to be sextile to Mercury and you'll be able to articulate yourself a heck of a lot better than I am right now. Your natal sun, however, will also be square to the current sun, which can interrupt and make you have some confidence issues but really when it comes down to it especially with that sextile to mercury it could just humble you just enough so that you don't sound too arrogant yeah so it actually may work out because there's a sense of humility that might come from it and so not only will you sort of speak with confidence you'll also speak with compassion and open-mindedness so this could actually help you in an odd way though listen if your confident if your confidence is compromised think of it this way believe in the purpose you don't have to believe in yourself you can circumvent that and just believe in the purpose and that there's a purpose behind why you need to do this and so if you focus more on that then you can circumnavigate any kind of insecurities you may be facing that may be discouraging to you um and then we have now some people when it's a sun square their natal sun they can get arrogant to overcompensate for um to overcompensate for the insecurities and that could cause you to butt heads with other big old egos that is something that you definitely want to avoid because that will always be counterproductive um we have you trying to saturn which is a long-term trying you guys are going to be trying to Saturn all year long that is a career advancement and I think especially then if you're having conversations or communications or ideas or plans that revolve around um, your work there's a, a good possibility and potential for you to really really make a lot of moves this week and for communications to go very very well 
Um, and then we have that a long-term square to Pluto, but this is only cuspers. So I would say only people born maybe the 21st or 22nd of October. Like it's only cuspers at this point that are experiencing that square to Pluto as Pluto gets deeper into Capricorn. So um, once again, that's just change going on in your life and also a sense of when it comes to your natal sun, a sense of such energy you might be imposing or so relentless that it starts to intimidate people or turn people off. Now, I can't imagine that being a Scorpio, that wouldn't that intensity wouldn't happen to you anyway. But the fact that, that your natal suns are in this square, it's just going to intensify things and could cause more issues for you simply because people are judging you because of the level of intensity instead of you... Um, Instead of, instead of, well, it's, it's not that it's not fair because you have that level of intensity to you. I think it could be very productive for you as long as you're aware of it and you aim it as opposed to being unaware of it and letting it overtake you and then wondering why people don't want to be in the same room as you or don't want to, you know, are intimidated by you more often now. It is because of this square to Pluto. So there's a sense of owning it and understanding it so you can redirect the energy um, and it won't work against you just an FYI all right Scorpio twos if you know that your natal Sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Scorpio you are Scorpio twos and this correlates to Scorpio birthdays between November 1st and November 10th you guys are sextile to Mars this week which is really beautiful but your natal suns are in opposition to Jupiter still this is a fantastic week for you to make some moves for you to take action that opposition to Jupiter isn't necessarily a horrible thing it just means that you want to grow and you want to expand and with that sextile to Mars this week it could really be a rocket fuel to push you forward or push your life forward in whatever way you're putting your energy so absolutely use this energy this week and then you have a long-term uh, um quincunx to chiron this is nothing new this has been there for a while and will continue to be this just means that there's frustration beneath beneath the surface of you that wants to like that that is um that has been caused by challenges maybe feeling like everything is a challenge and feeling like things are extra hard for you why is it like this Chiron is all about teaching you to prepare you, um, teaching you to be the best of yourself by having to face difficult situations. So th that that is nothing new. It's not really being exacerbated right now. Well, technically it is because it's conjunct loosely conjunct the North Node, which could exacerbate anything and make it more intense to change things, especially situations that you have failed at or you have always thought were difficult. So there's this energy now of being able to move forward or take some leaps forward for you guys this week. And I say, absolutely do it. Trust the push. You'll feel the push. It's not really a thought with Mars and Jupiter. It's a push or, or feeling like you're being pulled. Go with it, but you're going to have to take the action. It won't just pull you naturally. You'll feel yourself be pulled. Act upon it. Trust it because it is um, sort of guiding you to something that that could be a bit, big breakthrough. Yeah, that's a good way to explain it. Um, all right, let's go to Scorpio 3s. Scorpio 3s, if you know your natal sun is between 20 and 29 degrees Scorpio, you are Scorpio 3s. Um, this correlates to birthdays between November 11th and the 21st. Um, all week long and for actually for a while, I will say, because Venus is in retrograde. So it's going to like retrograde and then it's going to come back. Your natal suns are square to Venus. So there is this sense of challenge when it comes to what you desire, who you desire, your relationships in general because of the desires that you're feeling as well as financial um, tension and strife that could happen right now. Um, yeah, this could be for the next, uh, that this, this could be on and off for the next month or so. So just, just be aware of that. Um, this is not the best time to spend a lot of money or make a big ticket item purchase or 
Um, and I don't mean to make you be afraid here. I think it's the time to learn about what's going on and where the, the, uh, the hiccups are. Um, and then by learning through that, you could actually release the energy that needs to be released in order to clear it out of the way and then be able to move forward um, toward mid-October. But ultimately now this will be a period that's intentionally trying to challenge you to help you see or learn different things that you need to learn, probably for the your better, for you know, to improve your situation in the long term. Um, your natal suns are also in opposition to Uranus. This is nothing new. This has been happening for a while. With the square to Venus, this is going to cause a lot of frustration when it comes to um, surprising yourself or a sense of feeling odd or awkward or like you don't belong even in situations where once you held a lot of value or you really liked being uh, like that's not you're it's, you're gonna feel like an outsider in some cases in your own life so this this could just be exacerbated by the square to Venus and over the next month or so this could be on and off for you because venus will travel through the third decan um um not of scorpio will travel through the third decan of leo back into the second decan and then once it goes direct it'll come back around again so it'll be you'll be square to venus and then you won't be and then you will be again over the next 40 days so into i would say right into november so Lots to learn with regards to the way you desire things or how you're desired or how you're valued. It's a reassessment time. Um, we also have a sextile to Pluto, which means there's opportunity in change. So don't be afraid of it, especially this week. Um, and then we have uh, also, um, yeah, then we have a trine to Neptune, which means an uptick in your creativity and a, and a real, especially with a sextile to Pluto and trine to Neptune, there's a real sense of spirituality, intuition, and your own personal magic. So believe in that and get to know it more intimately over the next couple of years. Um, and this could really help you with regards to things that are surprising you or making you feel like an oddball because you're being awakened to different aspects of who you are. And it it's supposed to change you. Um, and then a quincunx to the North Node is really interesting because the North Node is so close to Chiron right now. This could really cause major frustration when it comes to wanting to make changes that you don't feel you have any control over or any opportunity to change. This will motivate you to want to make change all the more, um, which could cause exaggerated frustration over the next couple of months. Just an FYI. You guys let me know in the comments below how all this is impacting you. And then remember to like this video if you've enjoyed it. And um, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And come on over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot for your week ahead tarot card reading. I love you guys. And I will talk to you next week. Bye, Scorpio.